Welcome to From the Ashes, the Dungeon Crawler Network podcast all about Ashes of Creation by Intrepid Studios. Bear witness to the rebirth of the MMO RPG genre from the ashes of an industry that has left the gamers behind. I am your host and founder of the Dungeon Crawler Network, Ajelos, and with me once again, my co-founder Thais. How are you? I am really good. I'm really excited for this show. (laughs) I know, two episodes in a row we're doing another one of these Pillars of Creation segments, which is really cool. I'm really glad about that. Um, So, uh, for those of you just joining us, obviously the From the Ashes podcast is broken up into multiple segments that we do from time to time. Um, as, As the show progresses and as the game gets closer to launch, obviously more segments will be included in every podcast. But for now, we have it down to about one or two. Pillars of Creation is our... Good Morning America style, I guess, a little talk show where Thais and I sit down and, and talk about various various aspects of meta gaming and stuff like that, or even even about the game itself and bring it and relate it to Ashes of Creation. Uh, so before we get started on this special topic, uh, I got to give a shout out to a couple of our new patron supporters we have over there at patreon.com slash dungeon crawler network. That's how we fund the network. That's how we get all of our equipment and do all of our fun stuff. And of course, bring you the episodes and shows that you like on a weekly basis. Uh, we have a new patron supporter this uh, week, which is uh, Rick Rorick. Thank you so much for your support. It means a ton to us. It really does. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, we hope you enjoy all the stuff we try to do over here. All right. Now, (laughs) this is a fun topic. And I thought it was only fitting that I brought my wife, who is Thais, onto the show to talk about this. And as you can see, she's very excited. Uh, If you are watching this on YouTube... Uh, which is youtube.com slash dungeon crawler network or if you're listening to us on itunes stitcher radio google play or anywhere else that you find your podcast well you're just gonna have to imagine her squealing like a little girl um because we are talking about marriage as a system in mmos and how it relates to ashes of creation and what we would like to see these before you explode go ahead just let it out well, well, what all do you, do you want me to just, just start? Just start? Oh, no, no. I was just going to let you like... squee. I was going to go ahead okay. and jump into it. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. There's so many different systems to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, see, that's why I had to bring her on for this one. I actually, if you've ever seen our show notes, which uh, other than the producer level people uh, who support us over on Patreon, that most people don't get to see unless you've been on the show in the past. But for the longest period of time, I have a lot of different topics written out and this is one that i've had on there for quite a while and we've hit that point in the development cycle where news isn't coming as as fast as uh you know we can do shows because we are a weekly podcast and uh, this was a fun time that we could sit down and talk about so what we're gonna do is pretty much all we know is that there is going to be some sort of marriage system within ashes of creation that is what we know it's been asked before and they did say there would be some way of of joining players together in a union but we don't know what that entails and obviously this early on in development i'm sure they don't even know what this entails so we thought it would be fun to sit down and talk about different ways that marriage uh, or player union has been done in other games and what we'd like to see within Ashes of Creation. Um, they, I mean, obviously, I kind of like when we did our wedding, you gave me a few little things to do and that was about it. And I was like, okay, cool. I can handle this. I think, I think you even said just show up on time and wear a suit and that was pretty much it. So... I'm going to go ahead and just let you kind of kind of jump into this. Why don't why don't you tell us a little bit about I guess one of your favorite systems then we can go from there. I'm probably just going to Thais is going to be running this episode almost entirely and I'm just going to be throwing commentary where I see fit. Well, I actually have like a speech set up for like the, the beginning of this. Can we just start there? Yes. And then I'll talk about my favorite? Okay. All right. Marriage in games, you know, unions, couple systems, those kind of things can range from very, very simple systems to games like ESO, where you get a 10% boost and a ring, to games like my favorite, which I've actually played, ASDA Story, where they have an entire soulmate system. 
in the game. And there's, I mean, I have, I have a bunch of notes written down at different ones that were fun to, to, to talk about. And a couple systems and games are, are really interesting. It just gives a way for you to connect differently with different players. And it gives actual couples, spouses, ways to connect in games so that they can show they're connected and to, to, to be in love and in video games. So they're, they're a lot of fun and they can be really interesting, the different things that they do. And my, my favorite one, and I'll talk about everyone. My favorite one is from a game called ASDA Story. And it, it's, it was just a, a small game of free to play. And they had what was called a soulmate system. Now their soulmate system was, was really cool. It was really intricate. There was so much you could, you, you had to, to do in there. When you became a soulmate with another player, your, your tunes weren't just connected. Your account, your entire account was bonded with the other player's account. So every character they ever signed on, you, you could see them no matter what, no matter what they did. When you were soulmates with someone, there was a ring that showed up around your characters when you were close together. And there were a bunch of different things that you got. You could obviously teleport to them, which is in most marriage systems and games, you can teleport to your spouse. Um, you got a lot of skills, a bunch of different skills. That was, uh, they were, they were fun. They boosted your, your attack power, magic, speed, all, all different things. There were a couple things that weren't like any other systems though. There was one system where you called a soul body where you actually gave your soul to your spouse before you logged out. And your spouse would carry this. And when you fought monsters, that little soul body would gain experience. And it would go all the way up to 100% until it was filled and could not gain any more. And when you signed back on, your spouse gave your soul back and you gained all that experience for when you were offline. So that was, that was really cool. Another thing that you could do is when you were actually hunting with your spouse, that you, you would hold on to something called a, called a soul apple. And as you're fighting, the soul apple would gain experience more and more and more and more. And when it filled, you know, you could, either one of you could eat it and gain an entire chunk of experience from just extra experience. When you were partnered, when you were partied with your, with your spouse, you gained like quadruple amounts of experience because on top of partying, you also got extra experience from being soulmates with this person. If there was a, a huge discrepancy between your level and your spouse's level, that actually worked in your favor because your spouse could lend you some of their power to make you more powerful in turn so you could fight larger mobs, harder dungeons. So that... uh. That system on its own is is pretty intricate. There, there was a lot you could do there. How do you how do you feel about a system like that? Something that deep? I, I was gonna say since that was one of your favorite, let's let's kind of hit it point by point and see if we can tie it into ashes, um, and see if it was something that we could work. So, like, what was one of the first things that you mentioned? I know you said about the soulmate system being a count bound. A count bound. Okay. All right. So this was that was one that I was really excited about. This game, and we've talked about this on past episodes, right? Like, I, I, I like the idea of being able to see your spouse, but the account bound thing, not so much. Only for the fact that, I mean, yes, like you and I, if we got married in game and stuff like that, well, like we're married here, we'd probably even have access to each other's accounts, even though technically that's against terms of service. But anyway, that's regardless. <laughs> Yeah, just share that with everybody, you know. Uh, yeah, From the Ashes does not uh, con uh, condone account sharing of any type. But anyway, sorry. I had to boilerplate that. With this game being about political intrigue and stuff like that, uh, I've kn I know multiple people within the Ashes of Creation community have expressed interest in having alternate characters with the sole purpose of doing various, I'm going to use the word nefarious things, even though I'm not really sure whether or not they would consider it that way. But I mean, all right, say you're part of a, of a, you're an outstanding member of a guild, of a certain place who, you know, a certain ruling body, anything of that nature, and you have a competing guild or a competing group of players or a competing player faction or, or 
um, not player factions, uh, if, you know, any of that kind of relay stuff, any kind of faction that's against you, rolling a second character to assume that role and infiltrate as a spy. That was something that was really big within Eve Online, you know, that kind of thing. Having a character that you played as part of a spy that wasn't linked to you. That's one of the reasons why they're not doing account bound, uh, guilds in ESO and Guild Wars 2 and stuff like that. It's account bound. You invited the account and then any character was automatically added. This is going back to the old style of the character itself is its own entity. And that way, if you do have that second character who's maybe your evil alter ego, uh, the PK or whatever the case may be, they are separated. There's that logical distinction. So the account bound here for the marriage system, I see that as an issue only for the fact of, say you and I are married, okay? And hypothetically, we're not married in real life. So, you know, we just married for whatever the bonuses are going to be, right? Because that is something people do. I mean, even in ESO, even though it was something that was simple, you got married in ESO uh, through the, the Ring of Mara, and it was just a, you know, you stood in front of a statue, you spun it around in a circle, and then as long as you were in a party with that person, you gain, like, 10% more experience. So people would marry other characters just so they could level up faster. That was what they did. And people will do that if benefits are, are immediate. They will find somebody in the guild and are within their cir social circle and marry just for the benefits. So I can't see, like, if we were married in game but had no other, no other connection, I don't know if I would want you to be able to see when I logged on to my other character who's meant to be a spy. I wouldn't want you to know that kind of thing. That, that up, up until that description, I was totally on board with a countdown marriage, but now I can see how that could really put a damper on what you're trying to accomplish, especially in a game like this. Yeah, yeah. Account bound's fine in other games, but I mean, one of the things that I always attribute to Ashes of Creation, one of the things that made me want to back it in the first place, was that it was essentially a fantasy Eve Online. And the idea of all those, and we've covered them on other shows that we've done here on Dungeon Crawler Network, our MMO podcast, The Dungeon Crawlers, for instance, we talked about... Uh, um, one of their latest wars and stuff like that. In fact, I think, I think on an upcoming episode, we talk about, uh, more issue or not issues, but player driven stories within Eve Online that actually resulted from pl uh, a player who happened to, I guess, defect to another, another corporation. And in the meantime, sold off all the assets from his current corporation before leaving. So that that level of uh, intrigue and subterfuge can't exist in an account-based game because there's no way to hide your actions through other characters, right? Totally agree. I mean, that's, that's the same of if you are a player killer or a criminal or anything of that nature, you have that bad reputation. And people can add you to friends list. I don't know whether or not, and this is something maybe we'll talk about in a little bit, but adding people to friends list, does it have to be, uh, you know, like in other games, I type slash friend, you appear on my list. You don't have to accept. It's not like Facebook where you have to accept. Like I can just add you. And that was one way in other games like World of Warcraft, for instance, you could tell where people went. Like you friended their account especially once the battle net thing came in and then you could see where they were going and where they were hopping around. And by being a role playing, a player character, anything of that nature and going out and, and, and killing people. And then people could friend you without your knowledge, track you and then see, Oh, you logged on, you know, you were on, uh, you know, Dr. Jekyll, and now you're on Mr. Hyde, or I guess I should be the other way around. <laughs> Mr. Hyde, now you're a Dr. Jekyll, and you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, we know what's going on here. And, and, it, and you lose that level of, of intrigue. So I, I'm definitely against the account bound. I mean, in other games, it might work, but in this one, not so much. All right. Uh, what was that? What was your next point? I think the next point for ASDA story was uh, skills. Skills. Okay. Special marriage skills. 
Dep- what were the special marriage skills? Like, that's something that is kind of interesting. I do like that concept. But what what kind of marriage skills did that game have? Now, obviously, I believe free to play. It, this was a uh, a Korean game, I imagine. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's actually worthy to note that the majority of, um, I guess I want to say marriage systems or games that seem to have them tend to result from these Korean MMOs. Like they have them on almost every Korean game. It's most Western games that don't. I can only think of a handful that do. And actually, I think we'll talk about them later. And the only two that come to my mind of Western games uh, was Rift and ESO's marriage system. But It's funny you say that because, yeah, I think that those are the only two American games I could think of that had systems of note. Yeah, and I mean, ESO's was barely of note. It was, yeah. But... So the skills that they had, there was uh, there was an, a special attack skill that you can only do if you were close enough to your spouse in a party, as that your ring showed up, uh, an attack skill. The rest were mostly just different kinds of buffs and a teleport skill that lets you just teleport right to your spouse. Now, off the top of my head, I don't remember, there were at least like six or seven different skills uh, 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 buffs, things like that. But trying to get an attack skill to to work with two players of a different class, I could imagine being really difficult. But I know that one of them was a special attack skill. Okay. Um, <clears throat> teleporting, not a fan of. Only in this game because, again, going back to what it is, they actually have mentioned in the past that there is going to be very, very limited fast travel. Um, period. So being able to teleport to a person who could be halfway across the continent would, they would never add that within Ashes of Creation only, or at least I wouldn't think so, only because that would then break their entire idea of not having a lot of fast travel, right? Like the idea is the world's supposed to be large. So having these marriage systems or whatever would allow that. But I, I, I don't mind the idea of like, skills i would like to see something like that though i don't know about attack skills because i I, that just kind of gives me that anime feel you know like oh we're gonna hold hands and you know power ranger activate kind of thing but maybe maybe like a passive a buff i could see of some type like and, and we've seen this in other games whether it be experience gain skill gain something like that those are easy to have i i like having when you're with your spouse that there is some benefit for playing with that person whether it be experience gain maybe it's um i i always try to force away from too much power gain because then it becomes a well you know like can you imagine a raid team who's going for world first everyone has to be married to everyone else it's just one giant open marriage apparently for the entire raid team you know, that way everyone has the buff, right? Like, there there would be nothing like that. It's like, it, oh, increases your attack power by 2%. Well, the min-maxers are going to go, all right, anyone who's on our raid team, we have 40 people. 20 of you have to marry the other 20 so that everyone has the buff because we're not going into this, you know, without that extra buff. So, honestly, the only buff I really like or skill that I would really like to see would be a type of maybe experience gain. Um, or, you know, I I was almost thinking like some sort of morale boost where like your stats or your resources regenerate faster. But then I'm like, well, no, that, that again tends to fall into the whole, it becomes mandatory, not a, not a, oh, it's, it's cool to have. Or, or, you know, I, uh, you know, can I have the bachelor life? Well, not if you want to play with us, you know, kind of deal. You know what I mean? I, I I would um I I definitely agree with with uh with the buff uh couple skill. I'm not sure I agree with the teleport though. I feel like if you're in a, if, if your spouse is in a metropolis is in a metropolis and you're all the way across the world, as long as they're in a giant like like the max level city, it'd be okay to teleport to them. But if they're in a field in a dungeon, if they're in combat, if there may be too many cons, too much space, if they're too far apart, they can't teleport things like that in this game i think i would be okay with because there is magic in this world so being able to teleport to your spouse in a city seems like it would make sense to me i i okay i i I can i can accept that i i can um 
But it would have to be very short range. It would be like... The same continent, maybe. I I wouldn't even say that. It, It all depends. Maybe same zone. Like, if that was a thing. So it's almost just like, hey, I can get to that person faster in that. But again, that you got to stay away from that whole idea of everyone in our raid group has to be married to, you know, the scouts, right? That way we can, the scout can race up there, find what we need, and we can just port to them instantly. It would have to be within a certain range. And uh, one thing I thought would be kind of neat, and this is maybe something that's maybe a little off, is maybe a a passive type skill where and I'm I'm thinking in Guild Wars too, like when someone was uh downed, maybe maybe her spouse reses you faster. You know, just because you know, out, even if it was just out of combat, like your spouse resed you faster. And then if there was some sort of res sickness or whatever, if your spouse was the one to res you, maybe you would have less of a uh a decline in your in your um whatever the death penalty is going to be. Let's say you lose experience upon death, right? So you die, but your spouse finds your body and resurrects you. Say it was 10%. Maybe as a spouse, you will, you know, you regain 2% of that. Not, a, not enough to make it like, wow, you know, it always has to be your spouse to res you, but maybe it's just a bonus of, Hey, my spouse, you know, we were playing together. I died and they had to come in and res me. Right. So instead of losing 10%, yeah, I know, yeah. Uh, I'm waiting for the people who watch our streams to make mention of the Guild Wars 2 event. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I die, she reses me, and now my death penalty isn't as bad because my spouse is the one who who res me in the first place. You know what I'm saying? What about a passive buff that uh, money drops more? Only slightly, but it, but money drop rate is higher. Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. I do like your idea. I like that. That seems like something that wouldn't be too beneficial. Like you could get away with not having your spouse do it. But I, I do like that, though. And and I'm thinking from the point of view from a game where money will have value, right? And we've talked about this in multiple mo- money in other games has value, but it's to varying degrees. Okay. Uh, think Guild Wars 2 or even Final Fantasy uh, 14 for instance their money value is different uh, because in Guild Wars 2 do you really need gold for anything other than teleporting not really I mean everything else is optional because e- even huh Dies. again optional I don't know if you think that's important for you, but it's it's optional, right? Like, even repairing your gear doesn't cost anything. Like, it's just, oh, there you go. It's repaired, and there you, you find an anvil, and you're good. So there's no repair cost for that. So everything within Guild Wars 2, other than the teleports, which, yes, now, well, now with uh, Path of Fire coming out and mounts, that may not even be as necessary, but still, it takes a while to come across the world. So teleport's really the only thing that where gold is of any real value almost everything else that gold is used for is is cosmetic in nature you know something that you really probably don't need in the first place or at least very little so the gold value there now again there is a the gold to cash shop currency in go wars 2 so that that gives a little bit more value but uh final fantasy 14 here's another one going their gill is almost worthless because other than repairs what what do you really need it for? All the gear you get either drops from dungeons or raids, right? Like all the best gear, right? Drops from dungeons and raids, and you can get that from either running raids or doing tome grinds, th- stuff like that. Like you don't need, you're not buying gear from other players unless you're really trying to either, you know, get an early start on stuff. Uh, or maybe even some crafting things. But for the majority, Gil has a very low cost. Because again, other than, again, teleports, is it a necessity in that game? Like, not really. You know, do you have 20,000 Gil or 20 million Gil? Doesn't matter. Other than some optional things like buying houses, who cares? Now, gold in... Ashes will have 
or, or should I should say, we've been led to believe. Obviously, once the game comes out, we will know what the value is. But the way they're describing it, gold will have a much higher value because of the emphasis they're putting on player economy. Where, yes, there will be raid drops. There will be dungeon drops and stuff like that. But gear does break. So there will be a lot of flow. And there's very limited soul binding for items in this game so there will be a lot of player to player transactions so therefore the the value of gold in this game would be higher because it would have more use and more tangible use throughout the entire life cycle maybe not just in early on so i i again anything that gives a a big benefit that doesn't cap out i tend to stay away from so i'm not i don't i don't like gold <laughs> i i don't and that's my reasoning for not liking it. Okay, I can I can agree with that with this game, definitely. Yeah, it, that, right. that's, that's what I feel. <laughs> I mean, experience is one thing in my eyes that, yes, okay, you get experience for playing with a character. You get experience for grouping anyway, so they're just incentivizing you playing with your, your spouse, it, whether they be your real spouse or your in-game spouse, whatever the case may be. But experience eventually hits a cap where I'm max level. It doesn't matter anymore, right? So it's not something that you can continually benefit off of. All right. The next point that I made off of ASDA story was uh, soul body. Now, that is something I do find to be very interesting. Because, again, with the soul body, that, that was the experience one, right? Yes, yeah, so you, you gave you gave your soul body to your spouse. You logged out, and when, when they did stuff, the the it, the experience accumulated, and then you give it back to them. You know, I wouldn't have too much of an issue with this, um, and, and this is me thinking just out loud here. I like the idea, but there needs to be a couple restrictions. One, it, giving that it, the experience should be halved for the person playing. So it's a detriment to them playing, but you're doing it because you're doing it for your spouse, right? So let's say something will give you a thousand experience. You only get half of that, or maybe even less than half of that. Like what would normally give you a thousand experience now only gives you eight or uh, 800. Okay, which is then split in half. So 400 goes to the soul body, which what is called in this game. I don't care what it would be in ashes and then 400 to you. And then 200 dies in the ether because it got absorbed. And you know, that's the power, whatever there needs to be a detriment for doing it, but it would be something to be like, Hey, I've been, I've been, here's some experience for you because I was, I was out doing this thing. So as long as there's hard caps. Now, my thought with this obviously is something along the lines of, could this be something people do? to sell and would that be a problem right like it, it all depends is is the mar if the marriage in game that's going to be provided will the marriage in game be permanent can, can i marry as many people as i want can i marry divorce marry divorce marry divorce am i am i king henry you know <laughs> of england here like i am not happy with my wife i chop her head off i get a new one you know like is is that the level or am i tied to one person for that life of the character because otherwise i don't see an issue with player economy of people selling experience like experience here you go you can buy it for gold i don't see that as an issue but with the soul body, it was connected to only that spouse. It was right. that so and so's spouse soul body that could only be delivered back to that person. That's it. Right. So what you would be doing would be purchasing uh, from a person. They would marry you, and then they would grind the experience out, and you would come up with a uh, a payment of okay, if you pay me one million gold, I will earn you approximately. Oh, let's say there's 50 levels in the game. I will get you enough experience to, I will power level your character for you by just doing this for money. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, I mean, I could see that being something that people could take advantage of, but the system that I have in my head regarding marriage and ashes of creation, no one is going to want to go through what I have in my head to make money off of something like soul body. Like you, that's, you'd be that's, surprised. That's what I, you know, I, I've been surprised by much less. <laughs> I don't mind it, though. 
because that is again player agency i mean look at evil online they they had insurance companies for your ships that were all player run like you paid money to them and they would insure your ship that if it was destroyed you would get you know they would pay you the cost of whatever it was so there were, and this was all player driven i am okay with this but there is a certain level the thing where i'm worried is if this would become an RMT kind of thing where you went to a website and said, I want a power level boost. And it became, you know, for a hundred bucks, you log in the game, you marry a, you know, a gold seller or a, a, an RMT bot. And then they go out and grind and they boost your character up. That's when it breaks the terms of service and when it can be a problem. And I mean, it doesn't even have to be from some like Chinese website. It could be, I'm paying someone else, like my buddy down the street, which I'm, you know, I've done in the past. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and I don't really care in other games. Like, it, but it is against the terms of service. And if anyone would have seen it, my account could have been banned. But, you know, my buddy's like, I'm out of a job. I don't have a lot of money. And I'll be like, Hey, I don't really want to level an alt. Log on to my World of Warcraft account and level my alt. And I'll give you a hundred bucks. If you get him to max level, you know, whatever the case may be, because all he was doing was sitting around all day anyway, until he could find a new job. So I'm like, here's some extra cash for you. Just level this character. And then more often than not, I never played him anyway, <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, even that level of, you know, not so much the shady RMT sites, it's still RMT, regardless of you went to some Chinese website, or you went to your buddy and paid them. That's still RMT, right? And that is against terms of service and a bannable offense and where it can be an issue. So, uh, you know, I, I love that idea. I actually really do like that. Um, but I, I'm just curious how someone would control it. Cause again, if there's no divorce in game, that actually tends to be a little bit, well, I guess technically it wouldn't be. It just would be harder. It'd be easier to farm experience on a max level character, right? You get into, a, you find a spot, you know, grind some stuff out as a max level, or would you have to create a new character every time and essentially take twice as long? If it took you 50 hours to level from one to 50, um, as a, uh, you know, as a solo character, well, now it would take you a hundred hours. Well, probably maybe more like 120 to level up because you're splitting it into that soul gem for the other person or the soul body or whatever you want to call it. So, all right. The last one was the soul apple, which accumulated experience from you two partying together and killing monsters, accomplishing goals, things like that. I think we talked about that earlier on. Yeah, I do like the experience bonus for. No, they're 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 separate. Well, no, I, I think we talked about the uh, from like how ESO did it. You did get experience for partying with your your spouse. No, no, no. The the soul apple got bigger and bigger with experience as you played with your spouse, and then once it reached maximum capacity, either you or your spouse could eat it and gain all the experience stored inside. But it only got bigger if you were in close proximity and partying with your spouse. Okay. All right. Okay. I see what you're saying here, but it was only, of the two of you, only one of you could actually use it, right? I believe so. I. It's been a while since I've played. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it, 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 it's a way of... of and I actually kind of like this. That I actually like more than the the soul the 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 whatever you call soul it. body soul <laughs> body because it would require the other person to actually be there, you know. <laughs> so it kind of removes the RMT or even the you know the selling portion because then essentially you're just playing with the person and they're just helping you level. You know what I mean? Like because I can tell you right now. If, if I were a gold seller or I was selling this, I wouldn't want to be beholden to, you know, I'm going to be doing it at my time, right? I'm going to sell your, these experience when I want to play, which is, you know, whenever I can get on, but I would need the other person. What if, what if I'm, uh, I work, I don't know, a, a graveyard shift. I get home at 4 a.m. and my grinding experience time is from 4 a.m. to like 8 a.m. where then I'd go back to bed or whatever. 
the other person's either asleep or at work, right? <laughs> you know, if they're in, you know, same time zone as me. So how would we even accomplish that? I wouldn't be able to sell them because they'd have to be online in order to contribute to that, to that event. So, all right, we should probably move on. To, well, go ahead. There's actually one more. Oh, okay. Uh, it would be a, if you were married to someone who was a considerably lower level, you could lend some of your power to them to make them more powerful. It's like a mentoring system then. Okay. O almost like a mentoring system. I like mentoring systems. I really do. But I don't know how I feel about mentoring systems, whether it should be an upscale or a downscale type thing. You know what I mean? Like, should I be able to boost the guy up? I guess it depends because, I mean, in reality, with modern games, I don't feel as bad an anymore because of I see how it's done. Like, uh, ESO is perfect for this with one Tamriel. Everyone's essentially max level, right? Like, all the mobs are veteran rank 16 or whatever it was whenever it ended. Uh, CP cap 160. That's what they're all designed to be, 160. Um, but while you're playing that, your character's boosted up there. But if you're level one, you're, you have the health of a CP 160, but you have one ability. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't have all your skills yet. So I guess upscaling is not something that really bothers me anymore. It really doesn't because I wouldn't be bringing, like, say I'm playing, I'm in a raid group, so I'm doing raids and stuff like that. Even with my upset, I wouldn't bring Thais who just started. Yes, she'd be the same level as me, but she wouldn't have all the skills and things she would need in order to complete the dungeon or raid effectively. Like there would be, it, it, I mean, I wouldn't unless it was 100% carry. And if it was a carry group, then it wouldn't matter if she did anything anyway, because we would have been able to complete it without her. Or actually probably the reverse. She would be doing that to me. <laughs> but the, the concept still stands, right? Like, if you're carrying someone, you didn't really need them to be there anyway. You don't carry someone if you needed all the people to beat the raid anyway. And in that case, it's not a carry. It's, you know, I, I know multiple times when I when I would do runs in, in like World of Warcraft and stuff, whenever they were doing carry groups, it was a matter of they're like, I don't really care. You're going in a DPS role. If you want a DPS, fine. If you die, who cares? I don't care. We can beat this without you. That's why we sold you the run, right? You know, you're here to get the clear and maybe some gear if that's what you paid for. You know, like we can do this without you. We don't care if you do five DPS. It doesn't matter. We can beat it without you. So unless it were that situation, I, I wouldn't be bringing someone in. So I, I do like the mentoring, uh, whether it's up or down. I don't really care. All right. Well, that, that was it for ASDA story, but do you want me to talk about uh, like one more or whatever? Yeah, or, no, let, yeah. let's let's go through some of the... Let's go through your list of what you like from other games, and if we see anything we want to hit, uh, we'll pull it up because you know, we're, we're definitely clearing through. I'm actually really glad about that. You've had quite a bit. So let's go ahead and just go through your list and we'll. Okay. Well, well, one other good one was, uh, my, probably my all time favorite game of all time that I've played for about 13 years, which is Maple Story. And Maple Story had a, had, had a few things that were special. When you married someone in Maple Story, as long as you had a spouse, you had access to a to a a marriage dungeon, which was they're called party quests, but it's essentially a dungeon. And your spouse did not have to be present. You only had to be married to to enter this dungeon. And there's something that was in Maple Story that wasn't connected to the marriage system, but I thought would be fun to mention because of how we feel and think Ashes of Creation will be, and that was a a family tree. That uh, you could add people under you to your family tree, who would then in turn add more people under them, and uh, I thought that that would be pretty interesting to to mention. You know, and actually, I like the idea of that family tree because what if they tied the marriage system in Ashes of Creation to their freeholds? Right, you have these outside housing areas, right? And while your spouse is there, whatever it's set up to do, maybe there's a benefit to having your spouse in the house with you at the time, you know? 
I, I don't say say you're you set up a uh, a foundry in order to actually like smelt metals and stuff like that. Maybe there's a bonus when your your spouse is also working in the same freehold that you know maybe you refine the ore and you got slightly more than what you normally would. The slag was a lot less for whatever reason. I, I I like that idea of especially with the freehold system because it is that like you can make whatever you want. Maybe there's a benefit to that. I don't think putting a special uh, marriage-only dungeon in the game is an option for Ashes of Creation, but it was pretty cool to have in a game like Maple Story. <laughs> you know what the special dungeon is? It's called Divorce Court. Which nobody wins. There's no loot. It's just awful. You lose money when you enter that. <laughs> Everyone loses. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's the special dungeon. It's Divorce Court. Uh, another another game that I, I played really for a little bit that that had something pretty interesting was a uh, Ragnarok, and uh, I, I I added that one because in Ragnarok you could actually adopt another player as a child, and uh, that player would have something special called the baby class, and their teleport actually let all three teleport together. So uh, ha- ha- having the ability to adopt another player as a child and having the family tree at the same time and then that child being able to marry, I, I feel like having all those elements together would be pretty cool. <laughs> no, uh, no, I got I to gotta disagree with you there. Sorry. I mean, there and again lies the whole idea of, like you said, being able to teleport together. All right, so we have a guild who's now adopting their entire guild, you know, as children, so therefore they can all teleport together. I, I actually did not mean the, the the teleport in that. Just adopting a player as a child, that child getting married, adding that to the family tree. Total, totally take the teleport off off the table. Okay, all right. It, uh, I'm against the teleport. All right. Um, here's something that's kind of interesting, and, and I know we've talked about it in the past, but what do you feel about there being a benefit to storage? Being something along the lines of a bank storage. Say there are banks, but what if your spouse shared bank access with you, like joint accounts? So by marrying that person, they also had access to your personal bank. But by doing so, there would be a benefit. Right. So let's say a player capped out at 100 bank slots for whatever reason. You could have two 100s or you could marry together and have a 250 slot bank. But both players could pull in and out of it. I would uh, I'd be OK with that. All it brings to mind, though, is SAO, where the one guy killed his spouse for the ring she had in her inventory. You know, and I was thinking that because that is something, and I really like that because it brings the idea of of a marriage system having a true value because you are going to trust that person, whoever it may be, because what would prevent them from taking everything you own and therefore splitting similar th- stories we've seen within Evil Nine. It's no different in that case where they were given control over resources and then they split, right? I really like the idea of there being some danger to marrying. I I like that because it, it means you have to know the person well enough to know they're not going to steal from you, which would tie into this game having people being, you know, sneaky and the subterfuge and ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> exactly. I love that. And, and it would make people weigh the the. Like you said, the uh, risk versus reward. Wow. I would essentially be getting, even if we split it right down the line and we drew a line saying, you know, everything to this side's mine, everything's that, I'm gaining an additional 25 slots. But do I want to risk the other person being able to grab everything? Like, that is the risk versus reward gameplay that I'm really hoping from Ashes of Creation and something that I know I personally would love to see Because by having that shared bank storage across two characters and having the larger bank, yes, I can store more, but then I always run the risk of, is this person going to screw me and run off and, you know, with all the stuff I have in there. So it's not, you're not going to, even if there were experience benefits, you know, 
people would probably still think twice. Do I really want that extra 5% experience for, you know, playing with my spouse? Sure. I level up a little faster, but then they took everything I owned, you know, like that's something that I, I really like. I like the idea. I of love that accounts. idea. I yep. love it. Awesome. Cool. We're on the same boat there. That was one of the things I really, really would hope they bring into Ash as a creation with a marriage system is benefits to storage, but both people can access. Now this game I didn't play, but I, I did I did Google a little bit to see what I could find on on interesting marriage systems. And this game is called the uh, it's called Age of Wushu. And their system, from my understanding, is very in depth to the point of before you get married, there's actually a period of mental preparation for the two characters, and there's a dowry. A dowry, you say? Like yes. How would that have worked? <laughs> like, I, I I could not find, or, or maybe I didn't dig deep enough. But I, I, the, the, what I had read was that that's what it put that there was a, a a period of mental preparation before you could get married and a dowry that had to happen. So I wrote it down because I was thinking, hmm, that's a that's a, that's, that's interesting. That's hmm, well, all right. <laughs> How would you uh, feel about having to wait? A, a period of time before, kind of like dating, I guess, before you could marry a person that you had in mind. Uh, and it, this is me thinking totally MMOE. Is the period of time just a matter of, okay, you know, is it the, you know, they, they put a lore reason to having to wait a week to marry someone, you know, like <laughs> whatever the, if they had a lore reason. I don't know. the The weight doesn't bother me. A dowry does. And do I have to pay you to marry? Like technically, I'd be. Well, no. Actually, technically, it would be your parents paying me uh, to to take their daughter. Um, but uh, anyway, but is it just like buying a marriage license? Is that the dowry? Does no one get it? Like you have to. Like I, I get what they did. You know, and it's it's very immersive. But when it comes to gameplay, is it nothing? Is it no different than just um, buying a marriage license? And then, like maybe even let's look at it even further. Final Fantasy fourteen, where they had a ceremony, but you had to schedule the date because for whatever reason there were only so many instances. Or I don't I don't know how that why that mattered. But is that it? Like you just have to schedule the instance. I don't know. I. I I think it's, uh, I don't know. I, I couldn't find a whole lot of detail, but again, maybe I just didn't dig deep enough. Okay. But I wrote it down because I thought it was, it was an interesting point to, to, to mention. No, it, it definitely is. I just, I feel like all of that is just superfluous. Like it doesn't matter. It, it was just it, uh, an immersive way to say you got to pay for the marriage license and then you have to wait for whatever reason. Like, I don't know. Am I really going to sit here and marry, go to marry someone in game and then sit here and go, am I really going to want to spend the rest of my MMO life with this person? You know, like, is that something like I'm really going to do? No, probably not. <laughs> well, I guess we can mention Final Fantasy 14 next, but there's, there's not a whole lot there. You got, um, a two-person mount, which which is also it makes it so much easier to get around if you're partying with this person a lot, and it even worked if you weren't married. So as long as you married someone at some point, you got to keep this mount. You could teleport to your spouse, which we already talked about how you cannot stand that, and you got a you got a special minion collectible. That's that was that was pretty much it. It's pretty pretty standard stuff, except for. The, the church you went into to got ma to get married. Now that was very pretty. <laughs> you even got to pick the colors. You got to pick how it how it looked on the the, the flowers, and that was pretty neat. No, I, I do I, I do agree. And I think we talked about this in another. A riff did that too, not to quite the extent that uh, Final Fantasy fourteen did. But Rift did have, oh, you can marry in one of 
X amount of special locales where it's an instance where you can invite everyone. It's just a marriage ceremony, right? You start the 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 encounter and the NPC does the vow thing, but whatever the case may be. Now you're right. Final Fantasy 14 allowed you to do all sorts of the nitpicky things, like you can choose the flowers, the types of flowers. Do you want the uh, do you want the fountain to spray in a three or four fountain? You know how uh, formation. The color of the carpet runner on the floor. Yeah, things like that. Like you really could. Like you know. Oh, I want everything to match the color of my dyed dress that I'm going to. Yes, there was that level. But the idea, the concept of that special marriage instance was something that has been in other games. And I mean, it's neat for the event at the time. It really is. And it is something that I think does provide a little bit of a little extra uh, to the event rather than something... uh, akin to ESO where you literally just went to a specific spot in the starter town. Um, in at least if you played Daggerfall Covenant in that game, you at least got to go into a, a temple of, of, of the divines in order to find the, the statue of Mara. Uh, but I think in, I think if you played Ebonheart Pact, it's literally out, it's just sitting by a fountain outside that, you know, <laughs> actually I think uh, at, Aldmari Dominion was the same way. It was just outside in a garden somewhere. Um, so is I don't know. Like I, I do like that idea, but I don't feel like that is necessarily a system. That's just an event that attributes it. And I mean, that's a system event. What could be a player event? Because people used to do this in older games. Like the idea of having the ceremony was something other people did, but it was not done through an in-game system. They literally said, all of our guild, let's go meet somewhere, and we'll, you know, have someone type up vowels and say it in say chat, or whatever the case may be. Like, there were, there, that was just an automated system for what players used to do previously. When I played Terra, I played on an RP server because I really enjoyed RPing, and I actually attended a wedding that had... I would say about a hundred people in a tree and, and they had, uh, um, Oh gosh, a priest actually typing everything out. And there were people sitting down. You had to dress a certain way. You could not cheer. You couldn't move, couldn't walk around. It was, it was pretty detailed. The instructions they gave you, if you were going to attend this wedding, that was purely RP'd. But things like that, when there isn't a system in the game, if you if you take the time, oh, you can make it so nice if if you really want to get into RPing. And in this game, a group of players can come up and kill everyone at the ceremony. It'll essentially be the red wedding. <laughs> one of the uh, I only have uh, I guess one more important game here called. Aura Kingdom, which was a cute game. I I enjoyed it, but I've played a lot of free-to-plays. They're all pretty cute. (laughs) Uh, This one, when you got married, you had access to a special store. And uh, I know we talked about skills before. This one had skills, too. But in order to get the different skills, you actually had to work on what was called commitment, which I assume would be you have to spend time playing with your spouse to level up to get access to these special, you know, marriage skills. <laughs> would you would you like that instead of just having the skills? Like having to work towards your skills? Whether it's work or not, I really I don't like the idea of I like the idea of having skills in the game, but I don't like the idea of having them locked behind something that not anyone can get to. And I and I, How I don't dare I have to spend time with you to get the skill. No, no. I'm I'm re- more referring to the fact that I don't mind the idea of like, okay, there being a skill lock behind a player or a, a run faction. We talked about those those social organizations in the past. And you're gonna be locked to those. I'm fine with that. But for some odd reason the idea of having to get married in order to unlock a skill like <laughs> It, it 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 just runs contrary to my idea of what the what the system should represent in the first place. Secondly, what was skill would be there? Conflict re, re, uh, resolution? Like, is that the skill you are then learning? And in case of at least in America, not many people learn that skill because most marriages end in divorce. So <laughs> apparently, you know, lesson not well taken. 
I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm not fond of skills being tied to it. I do like the idea of there being, like you said, certain convenience. Items. Like, even the idea of a mount uh, that multiple people could ride, you know, or a cart or a- anything like that. It was some flavor. That's nice. I do like that. I do like the idea of experience bonuses. That's nice. But I honestly think in Ashes of Creation, the only tangible system for marriage that I really like that fits with the mythos that they have is the shared bank storage where you can get a reward for marrying with a larger bank, but therefore also run the risk. And that's my personal opinion. I mean, others may have more and I would really be curious to hear what other people think in the comments on this video or send us an email. If you head over to dungeoncrawlernetwork.com, you hit contact us and drop down for this ep- for this show from the ashes and send us a message and let us know. Like, I'm really curious, especially if you're a podcast listener, you don't have to go to YouTube, but you can send us messages and maybe there's a good chance that we'll read it on a future Pillars of Creation segment. Uh, Thais, any, yes. anything else before we wrap up this episode? All right, my, my, my final thoughts on marriage in ashes of creation is i want it because they're going for realism in this game i'm gonna sound like such a dork but i really want marriage to be intricate make it make it (laughs) make it you know real make it seem real make it match the world Make the characters have to stay dating for a certain amount of time. Maybe they'll find out they can't stand each other. And then make it so that you can adopt other players. Make it so that you have access to, to, to your spouse's house. You can move their furniture around and you have to have this house together to, to decorate and to buy and to pay taxes on to fix it if it the city is destroyed. You know, make it so that there is shared storage but that people can your spouse can steal everything from you like make these systems in the game the game's going for realism like let's make it semi realistic and fun and detailed and i really want it (laughs) awesome all right my final thoughts uh definitely just as with everything else in this game Marriage needs to be risk versus reward, similar to how it is in real life. Obviously, you are taking the risk that this person will not screw you, and therefore, you need to be willing to accept that risk if you want to receive and reap the benefits of this union, whether it be, you know, a family ties, um, love, any of those things that would come with this marriage contract. Make it be a thing. Also, make Divorce Court player run because I want to see this and make sure that when they divorce does happen that the bank gets locked off and they have to like do this weird little uh, (laughs) decide who gets what. All right, you take this and I take this. No, I'm just kidding. But still, that's awesome. All right, we hope you enjoyed this episode of From the Ashes, the Dungeon Crawler Network podcast for ashes of creation you can find everything we do dungeoncrawlernetwork.com i really encourage you to leave us a review on itunes our stitcher radio our google play wherever you really listen to us uh youtube give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode i really hope you did uh and subscribe to us because we do this weekly every week we've been doing shows uh to entertain while we wait for the game to come out and of course plan to continue this once the game releases so check us out at all of our social media uh facebook twitter uh youtube twitch.tv slash dungeon crawler network um you can find us all there ashes podcast for twitter because that's where we're at and uh we hope to see you in ashes of creation see you later